the tag team championship match between the Good Brothers and Private Party at No Surrender suddenly and confusingly is now a triple threat match. Jake Something finally makes an appearance in Impact Wrestling. Jackson Stone makes another appearance on Explosion. And I give my No Surrender preview and predictions. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Thanks for joining me today. Real quick before I get started, just want to remind everybody that I do have my own YouTube channel, the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Lots of great content up there. Please head on over there. Hit that subscribe button, the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Make me a happy camper. Hit that subscribe button. I'm I'm over 200 subscribers now. Last I looked, I was at 215. Very, very happy about that. Thank you so much for everyone that has subscribed. And I really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, go on over, check it out, Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. And uh, check out all the great content. And if you're happy with it, hit that subscribe button because there's a lot more great content on the way. Okay, so let's get going. So at No Surrender, at No Surrender, the Impact Wrestling Tag Team titles are on the line. Well, they were on the line as the Good Brothers were scheduled to defend the tag team titles against private party now if you remember two weeks uh, two or three weeks ago maybe four weeks ago private party defeated chris sabin and james storm in a number one contenders match uh, to earn a shot at no surrender against the good brothers so that was set and there was a lot of buzz behind that and it was going to be a fantastic match in my opinion, it was going to be a very exciting match. I was looking forward to it. Matt Hardy is involved. He's managing private party. So it had all, it had the recipe to be a terrific match. But Impact Wrestling decided that they needed to change it. <laughs> they needed to change it. So this week on Impact Wrestling, something confusing, in my opinion, happened. The losers of the number one contenders match got a shot at the Impact Wrestling tag team titles as the Good Brothers defended against James Storm and Chris Sabin. So the losers of that number one contenders match actually got a shot at the Impact Wrestling World titles a few days before the winners of the number one contenders, uh, number one contenders match uh, between Private Party and Sabin and Storm. Uh, yeah, Saban of Storm. Uh, so that's a little confusing. Why would the losers get a shot at the tag team titles a few days before the winners would? It, it, it doesn't make sense. What would be the what was the point of having a number one contenders match if that's what they planned on doing? And to make matters even worse, in my opinion, they've decided now to make it a triple threat match because Private Party interfered in the the match um, this week, and so Scott Demore said it's now a triple threat match. It's now a triple threat match. It's the Good Brothers defending the titles against Private Party and Saban and Storm, which, to my, in, which in my opinion, makes absolutely no sense. I mean, what would be the whole point of having a number one contenders match if this is what they're going to do? Why couldn't they just leave it Good Brothers against Private Party, which would have been an absolutely fantastic match? It, it's it's not like it's not like oh gosh we don't know how this match is going to go off you know it might not be there might not be uh, enough chemistry there it might not be a good match no it was going to be a great match but but thinking oh it might not be a good match so we need to you know what why don't we just add Saban and Storm to the match that that'll that'll make things um a little better um for the match and no it doesn't it doesn't in my opinion what they should have done what they should have done is they should have had private party. Uh, taking on another tag team on uh, this week's episode of uh, Impact Wrestling and Private Party going over and building themselves up as legitimate contenders. I know they're number one contenders, but they've only had one match so far in Impact Wrestling. Have, let them have another match, have them win, and they build themselves up to be even more legitimate uh, contenders for the Good Brothers. And 
like what they could have done is if they wanted to give Saban and Storm another shot, they could have had a match, Saban and Storm against another tag team, say against Triple XL uh, at at No Surrender. And the winner of that match, and I say Triple XL because I really can't think of any other teams right teams right now that are actually in Impact Wrestling, uh, because right now the tag team division is very, 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 very thin. Uh, so I think Triple XL might be the only other tag team that's that's a uh, that's around right now. Unless they throw someone together, but anyway, let's Triple XL. So it could have been Saban and Storm against Triple XL, and the winner of that match gets a shot at the winner of Private Party and the Good Brothers, and that would have made more sense, in, in my opinion. In my opinion, making a triple threat match, I think, takes away from the match. I mean, the whole thing was the whole idea was Impact Wrestling versus um, AEW, and now they're throwing in some more Impact Wrestling wrestlers. It just it doesn't make sense, unless you know. And BQ brought this up. BQ brought this up, and this was a very good point. BQ said maybe maybe Tony Khan doesn't want AEW to take a loss, or he doesn't want their his team to take a loss. Which, in that case, if if that was if that was the case, if he's uh, throwing his weight around, and they decided to put in Saban and Storm and have one of them take the loss, no, okay, fine. But I, I, I don't know if if that's if that's fact or not. That's just pure speculation. Uh, but I kind of wish they that they just left it the Good Brothers versus Private Party. We would have had a fantastic match, and. Um, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not running things there, <laughs> and I I don't make any decisions. I could just uh, I could just talk about the decisions that they make, and as of right now, it's Private Party and Saban and Storm against the Good Brothers, the Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Champions for the Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Titles at No Surrender. So that's the match that we're getting, and. Um, that's all I got to say about that. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, okay. And then also, also in the, uh, the last episode of Impact Wrestling, we finally saw our Cousin Jake become Jake something. Now, I've been asking for this for a while. I've been mentioning it. I mentioned, mentioned it on a number of um, podcasts in the past. Jake something is a great character. I've seen Jake something live a number of times uh, up here in, in uh, Ontario. And he is just absolutely fantastic when he came in as cousin jake we saw shades of of um jake something but he, he was doing the the cousin jake character uh but now he's jake something and i expect nothing i shouldn't say i i expect because who am i to expect but i i could imagine we we're we're all going to see great things from jake something because just a great character, very, very talented wrestler, great big man, very happy that he's no longer Cousin Jake. He's Jake something. I hope he goes full-fledged in this Jake something character. And the only thing I would have done, though, the only thing I would have done, I would have had him take that, taken out all three of uh, Violent by Design. Uh, I would have had him become Jake something and just take out all three of them and um, then challenge Diener to a match at No Surrender. So we're getting that match. It's going to be Diener against Jake Something at No Surrender, which should be fantastic. And I hope Jake Something Jake Something doesn't lose. You know, I, I think Jake Something should go over in this one. Uh, but that's just me as a as a Jake Something fan. Uh, nothing, not taking anything away from Diener. Just a big Jake Something fan. And uh, it would be, um, I don't, th it would be. Uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a good start for 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 the Jake something character if he took a loss to uh, to Dina right off the bat. Uh, so um, very excited. And when you think about it now, now, now they they've brought in the um, the Jake something character. We've seen the Jake something character. Josh Alexander is now uh, on his own. We have potentially Jackson Stone, who I'm going to talk about in in a few moments. Uh, we we have potentially a lot of a lot of great singles talent right now in Impact Wrestling. Uh, again, say Jake something, Josh Alexander, Rohit Raju, um, Sammy Callahan, Trey Miguel is back. So there's a lot of great great singles talent, single talent wrestlers right now in Impact Wrestling. It's very something to get very very excited about, and you know I, I hope they use them properly. I hope they use them properly. Um, this is 2021 is going to be a big year. I mean, with, with now Jake something uh, full fledged as a singles wrestler. And, and like I said, I hope they unleash the, the full version of the independent Jake something character on impact wrestling. Um, 
just great things are going to happen. Great things are going to happen now in 2021 uh, with this. And I, 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 I'm going to say I expect because I expect Josh Alexander to be the Impact Wrestling World Champion uh, within six, seven months. Within six to seven months, I expect him to have the Impact Wrestling World title because he can definitely run with it. He is would be a fantastic representative as the world champion for Impact Wrestling, and I I expect him to have it. I expect him to have the the title. I, I think he's got a year left on the contract on his contract. Uh, don't quote me. I, I'm not familiar with the contracts, but I believe it's a year or, or so left. But um, I, I would love to see the Impact Wrestling World Title around his way. So a lot of a lot of big things, big things um, coming up for Impact Wrestling. Something to, something to really really look forward to. And speaking of something to really look forward to, Jackson Stone made another appearance on Explosion this week. Jackson Stone, an absolutely fantastic, fantastic, fantastic wrestler. Uh, he took on Joe Doring, Joe Doring on Explosion. And this was a tremendous match. First off, I just want to say I love the ring entrance of Jackson Stone. The, the dude just has it. He has it. Okay. I'll say it again. He has it. The it factor. Fantastic, fantastic match here between him and Joe Doring. Now, let me talk about Joe Doring for a second. Joe Doring needs to be unleashed as well as a singles wrestler. I know I mentioned Jake something, Josh Alexander. Joe Doring is freaking fantastic in the ring. This and it was apparent in this match against John, um, Jackson Stone. He is just fantastic. He is a a tremendous big guy, and he was hit. He was hitting some massive, massive, um, some massive spots, massive clothesline. Uh, he hit uh, on Jackson Stone to win the match, but he is just so damn good. And he's they they need to get him into more singles matches, and not just uh, stand behind Eric Young and be like a bodyguard type. They need to get him into more singles matches, like ASAP. You think about, you know, and I mentioned Jake something, Josh Alexander, and uh, Joe Dor. They have potentially, they have some fantastic singles talent, and we can expect some tremendous, tremendous matches in 2021. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's, it's just getting excited about the potential for Impact Wrestling in in the singles division. The tag team division needs a lot of work. There, they don't have too many tag teams right now. They only have like three or four tag teams. Well, I shouldn't say three. Private Party is not really an Impact Wrestling tag team. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's not really an Impact Wrestling tag team. So they have really like three tag teams. They need to get some more tag teams in there. Uh, but the the singles division right now is just just it's just ready to explode. They're just ready to explode with some fantastic matches. And back to Jackson Stone. And I spoke about him last week, and I'm going to speak about him again this week. He was just tremendous. I just, I loved the match against Joe Doring. Uh, Joe Doring was hitting him with some some big bombs, but Jackson Stone was just kept getting up, kept taking him. It was landing some awesome chops to Joe Doring's chest. Joe Doring's chest was was all red, and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Jackson Stone has it. He has the it factor, and he's going to be a, a tremendously huge star for Impact Wrestling. And I like how we saw him two weeks in a row. And like I said last week, we don't have to worry about him disappearing. He's under contract with Impact Wrestling. It's not like it's it's one and done. We're not going to see him again. He's under contract with Impact Wrestling. So I like that we saw him two weeks in a row because it, it tells me that Impact Wrestling is – they want us to see him more. Now we got to get him on the main show. we got to get him on the main show. And uh, it's just a matter of time before we're going to see it. But I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking. Remember when Samoa Joe made his debut for TNA? Remember the buzz that was around it. The, the I forgot who his first opponent was. It might have been Chris Saban actually. But remember the buzz around Samoa Joe after that first match. I think we could get the same buzz for Jackson Stone after his first match on Impact Wrestling on the on the on the main show. I think we get the same buzz. They need to give him an opponent that he could defeat and defeat and def and um, look look tremendous in defeating his opponent, like Samoa Joe did in his debut. That's what they need to do. Like 
if you want to put him against Chris Saban, you know, he has to win. He he can't go in onto the main roster and lose his first match. Because if he loses his first match on the main roster, yes, he lost twice in explosion, but it's explosion, you know, they're where they're they're like introducing Jackson Stone. I, he can't go he can't go on the main show and lose his first match because that would kill all the buzz immediately for Jackson Stone. He needs to go in the first match on his first match, he needs to win and he needs to go on a winning streak. Much like Samoa Joe, they they should just think Samoa Joe. And I know it's Jackson Stone, and I, I'm not saying Jackson Stone is is the next Samoa Joe, but I'm thinking they need to think how Jackson, how Samoa Joe was brought in, and and do the same with with Jackson Stone and bringing him in. You know, have him win his first match. It has to be a tremendous win. It needs to make him look really really good because he's he's a suplex machine. Okay, he's a suplex machine, and he can suplex the hell out of people. And he could look damn good doing it. So his first match in, he needs to win. And that that's my opinion. That's my opinion on that. And I'm looking forward to it. And I hope it's soon. I hope it's the next set of tapings that we see Jackson Stone on the main show. Cause, And I'm going to say it again. The dude has it. <laughs> he has it. Okay, we saw... Um, Decay brought in a new uh, a new wrestler, uh, a new member of the faction. Uh, I thought it was Black Taurus, but apparently it's Black Tarus is is the name. I thought it was Black Taurus, but it's Black Tarus. Whoever's playing Black Tarus is is tremendously talented. You know that's not, that's a, this is something else to get excited about. You know a lot of fresh faces we're seeing, but uh, I know he we, we see. I think we saw him before. Uh, he was on. Um, I think when they did the Mexico tapings. Uh, I believe we saw him, but uh, we saw him again. He's now a part of the Decay faction, and uh, like I said, very very talented. I'm I'm not a fan of the of the the bull mask. Um, it looks a little, <laughs> my opinion, it looks a little goofy. But uh, that doesn't take away from, from the talent. Whoever's playing Black Tarus is is very talented, and uh, he had a big win over um, Caleb with a K, and. The win that he had over Caleb with a K, let's go back to Jackson Stone. That's the type of win Jackson Stone needs to have when he comes in uh, to Impact Wrestling on the main roster. Uh, that's the type of win he needs to have. If, if you're not familiar with uh, the Samoa Joe first match uh, and you want to compare it to something, Black Tar Tarus, I, I almost call him Taurus. It's Black Tarus. Uh, he, the way he won over um, Caleb with a K was, was dominating. And that's the way Jackson Stone needs to be brought in. So you can compare it to that match. You know, I, I got excited. Black Tarus, I want to see more of Black Tarus. And, and when they bring Jackson Stone in, and I don't want to, I don't want to sound long winded. I don't want to keep talking about Jackson Stone. I don't want to get people bored, uh, but that's how they need to bring Jackson Stone in. Uh, but I'm I'm looking forward to more of Black Tarus. I think he fits in well with Decay, uh, except for the goofy mask. But uh, again, uh, I have no I have no control over that, and uh, I'm sure we'll see more of Black Tarus in the future. And um, I'm looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. And so now let's uh, let's get on. We have um, no surrenders coming up. Uh, this Saturday. Uh, first off, I want to talk about the, the Triple Threat Revolver match. This is a fantastic idea. This is what Impact Wrestling needs to be doing, man. This is a, a just a tremendous. This is a new idea. It's a great idea. It's um. You know, let's see who's uh who is in this match. Let me pull up all the parts. Oh, by the way, uh, Blake Christian. We saw Blake Christian again. That's very, very promising. That's very, very promising. Well, we saw Blake Christian again, and uh, we're going to see him at No Surrender. And very Blake Christian, another great, great young talent. I hope, I hope they sign him. I hope they, they bring him in. I hope, um, I hope maybe he's already signed and they'll make the announcement. But it was great to see Blake Christian back. Uh, on Impact Wrestling. Uh, so back to the Triple Threat uh, Revolver match. Involved in that match is going to be Austin, uh, Ace Austin, Blake Christian, Chris Bay, Davare, Josh Alexander, Suicide, Trey Miguel, Willie Mack. Um, as I said, it's a Triple Threat Revolver match. So three wrestlers start. So when one wrestler gets pinned in that Triple Threat match, another wrestler will come in to make it another Triple Threat match. And we keep going until there's only three wrestlers left. And the winner of that final Triple Threat match becomes, I believe, the number one contender uh, to the X Division title. And that's a, that's a great idea. That's a great – whoever came up with that, that's a fantastic idea. That could be the best match of the whole show. 
that could be definitely, without a doubt, the best match of the whole show. And it's great that we're going to see um, uh, Josh Alexander a part of it. Uh, like I said, group, uh, played Christian, Chris Bay. A lot of talent in that match, and it's it's that's going to be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to that one. And again, whoever came up with the idea, that was a great idea. And that's we need more of uh, more ideas like this in Impact Wrestling uh, to keep it fresh, to keep it exciting. So no surrender. Let's get my phone here, here, so I can read off the matches. So as we know, the main event, Rich Swan versus Tommy Dreamer. I, actually, I said preview and predictions when I started, but I think uh, I'm not going to bore anybody with pre with preview. We all know, uh, I think we all know back the backstory to each match. So I'm just going to give read the match and give my prediction. Uh, so I'm going to say it's uh, Rich Swan versus Tommy Dreamer for the Impact World title. There's no way in hell Tommy Dreamer is taking the title. So Rich Swan will walk away as the Impact Wrestling World Champion, and he'll probably be taken out by Moose after the match. Good Brothers versus Private Party versus Sabre and Storm. Good Brothers to retain. I kind of wish it was just Good Brothers versus Private Party, but like I said, I have no control over it. TJP versus Rohit Raju for the Impact Wrestling X Division Championship. I think Rohit Raju uh, with Mahabali Shira, uh, I think uh, Shira is going to get involved. And I think Raju is going to regain the Impact Wrestling X Division title. Fire and Flavor versus Havoc and Nevea in a Texas Tornado. No disqualification match for the Impact Knockouts Tag Team titles. I'm going with Fire and Flavor to retain. Diener against Jake Something. Really looking forward to that one. Uh, I'm picking Jake Something to win that to win that match. Triple X and Tennille Dashwood versus Decay, uh, Rosemary, Crazy Steve, and Black uh, Tarus. Uh, I'm picking Decay to win this. I think Black Tarus will get um, the pin over. Um, not sure, but uh, Black Tarus will probably get the final pin. Kimberly, Susan, and uh, Diona Peraza versus ODB, Jordan Grace, and Jazz. <sighs> Sorry, when I read that match, I got a little bored. <laughs> No disrespect, uh, no disrespect to anybody, but uh, I'm not really, uh, uh, not really all that interested in this one. But um, I, I'll go with Perazzo, Susan, and Kimberly uh, to win that one. Although ODB, Jordan Grace, and Jazz will probably go over in that one. Uh, Eddie Edwards and Matt Cardona versus Brian Myers and Hernandez. This should be another good one as well. I'm going to go with um, Edwards and Cardona to win that one. Kind of wish we would get another Eddie Edwards versus Brian Myers match 101, but um, but we're not. But anyway, this should be a very entertaining match. Good to see Mark Cardona in Impact Wrestling. And I heard he's he's back for the next set of tapings. Uh, so that's uh, good news uh, for Mark Cardona and Impact Wrestling. Hopefully they'll sign him to a longer-term contract. And then the, the triple threat match, uh, triple threat revolver match. As I mentioned earlier, Austin, Ace Austin, Blake Christian, Chris Bay, Davari, Josh Alexander, J Suicide, Trey Miguel, and Willie Mack all in that match. Kind of wish Suicide was not involved. I kind of wish they would have brought in like a Trey Lamar or a Lee Moriarty uh, for this one uh, to make it a little more interesting. And that, I mean, it's already extremely interesting. This is going to be a tremendous match, but it would have even been more interesting, I should say, if we had like a Trey Lamar or a Lee Moriarty involved in this match or even a Jackson Stone. Um, would have uh, made um, more sense to me than suicide, but but nonetheless, I'm gonna say I'm I'm picking I'm picking my man I'm picking my man Josh Alexander to win this match and become the number one contender for the X Division title, and uh, I think Rohit Raju and Josh Alexander in a feud for the X Division title would be an absolute fantastic one, an absolute fantastic one. So I'm going with Josh Alexander to win that match. And that's coming up this Saturday on impact plus don't miss it. <laughs> don't miss it. All right. Well, that's it for me. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Lewis Carlin. Again, this is shooting up North. We're heard right here on the impact lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Everyone so long. Bye-bye.